Aloha. We are about to sit down with three-time Ironman world champion, Marinda Carfrey, find out some tips and tricks, how her elbow's doing, and what it's like to shove ice down your pants. First off, thanks, Rennie, for taking time with us to chat during a busy week. I know a hectic week for you. So uh, the burning question, obviously, on everyone's mind mm -hmm. is your elbow. Yep. Um, for those that don't know, maybe you can share with us what happened uh, like two months back. Yeah, more like four weeks. Oh, four weeks. <laughs> four weeks okay, ago. Um, yeah, it will be five weeks um, come race day. Uh, yeah, I was just getting ready for my you know last race before Kona, which was Santa Cruz, 70.3. Two days before the race, I went out for an easy 20-minute jog, not riding my bike and uh, just like didn't pick my foot up enough. I was trying to run slow and so shouldn't run slow out there, folks. Um, and I just didn't pick my foot up enough and just fell. Um, and um, I put my hand out to catch my fall, sort of caught it with my like knee and hand and you know, a bit of skin off and I thought it'd be nothing more than that. And then went, you know, jogged home and realized my elbow was a little bit sore and then uh, went and got uh, a friend of, I spoke to a chiropractor friend of mine and she said, yeah, you might want to go get an x-ray, which is very surprising for me. I haven't broken a bone since I was about five years old. So, uh, yeah, uh, broken um, radius up at, um, at the neck and it took me uh, out of swimming for a few weeks, obviously out of that race, which was really disappointing. And um, we were really worried that I wouldn't be able to toe the line here in Kona, but the healing's been going really well. Fortunately, it wasn't displaced or anything, um, just a standard fracture um, and yeah this bone is not weight bearing either so should heal pretty quickly uh, they said six weeks to full healing I'll be racing at five weeks um, but it's more the training that I've missed I'm almost pain-free now it still hurts a little bit um, you know on the bike gripping the handlebars I've got to be careful with that it's totally fine in the aero bars but if it gets windy out there um, it'll probably hurt a little bit but honestly I think the adrenaline will take over on race day anyway and um, I won't be too worried about that but I'm going to be a little slower out of the swim than usual, unfortunately, but um, the good news is it didn't stop me from doing any of my cycling or running training leading into Kona. So those two disciplines are um, as ready as they'll ever be. Well, that's awesome to hear. I mean, congrats for coming back from a, a something that could have totally set you back. Speaking of racing and training, I'm wondering if you can share with folks um, your nutrition plan for, for training and racing and what you plan to do here on race day at Kona. Yeah, uh, my nutrition plan, uh, you know, in, in training, uh, obviously it just depends on the duration of the session as well as um, the intensity. I'm always using Roctane, uh, the drink, and also uh, Roctane gels for my harder run sessions and cycling sessions. Um, on easier ones, I tend to go towards um, more like the tab, uh, just for more electrolyte, less carbohydrate. Um, you know, you don't want to be pumping in a ton of carbohydrate if you're not going to be using it. Um, so just making sure I'm staying well hydrated through the tabs and, and also just like the, um, the general hydration drink. Um, and then on race day, it's all about Roctane. Um, I use the grape Roctane in both of my energy drinks. I sort of load them up and um, get most of my fuel through, through those two bottles. And then also I'll have six gels. Um, I'll be taking an assortment of flavors. Um, Mostly Roctane, but I'll probably throw in like a salted caramel or, or something. Or, um, Living dangerously. My, dangerously. My other favorite at the moment is birthday cake. Um, <laughs> another another favorite. Yeah. So maybe, you know, one or two of those, but um, the rest will be Roctane. And then um, I just take those, you know, every 30 to 45 minutes on the bike. Try to like, um, period, you know, keep my eye on the clock and you know, get it in. I, I think I take them on every 40 minutes. Yeah. Um, so three for the first two hours, three for the second two hours. And then um, the last hour, generally, I try to let my stomach settle a little bit and see, you know, how the intake's gone. Um, if I can stomach more, I will. Um, I want to try and super compensate for the run so that when I get on the run, I'm well hydrated, obviously taking water on at every aid station. And the cool thing as well is um, if I drop a bottle or if I lose a gel, um, Roctane will be on course, course, which is yeah. amazing. Um, so yeah, that that for me is peace of mind. I'm <laughs> not having to have another, you know, plan uh, plan B up at um, special needs because it's really hard to get the bottles from special needs. Um, but yeah, trying to super compensate on the bike so that when I get off the bike, I can just focus on running. I typically start the run with two gel flasks, um, three gels in each flask with just a little bit of water to just water it down. Um, and this year I'm going with lemonade. Um, so there'll be six gels that I'll carry with me. Uh, one I'll put in my pocket and the other one I'll sip. 
um, going into every other aid station. So I just, again, you're always trying to um, take on little bits of, you know, fuel regularly. I think that's the best way to keep your stomach happy and to keep your stomach absorbing um, as much as, as you can. Uh, obviously, in hot conditions like this, you would increase the amount of um, water you're taking in just because you're sweating so much. So that's kind of the plan that I've used um, in my almost 10, yeah, <laughs> 10 times racing ask, here in Kona. Yes, yeah. yeah, my 10th start this year. So that's the plan I've been using in all my Ironmans and obviously particularly here in Kona and, and it seems to work pretty well for me. So um, I'll be sticking to it. No, no new yeah. new stuff on race day. Yeah, never, never. I, uh, I call that really scientifically the sip, sip, nibble, nibble nutrition plan, right? Just I like that. Bit. Sip, yeah, yeah. Sip, sip, nibble, nibble. Yeah. So just quick tips and tricks for managing the heat and humidity here for folks out there do you have any like suggestions because i mean this is quite the shock to the system if you're not used to it so i'm wondering absolutely what i think for you the best um advice is to you know if you can come in early you want to get in you know if you can get in 10 days before the race it takes about 10 days to adjust to this sort of heat but uh you know i'm also fortunate in that i grew up in brisbane australia summer is similar similar to this it's uh, hot and humid, uh, so I think I, I adjust pretty easily uh, to this kind of weather. Um, you know, during the race, things you can do when, you dur when you're in the race is hydrate well, take on those fluids, slow down through the aid stations and make sure you get um, on board um, your nutrition and also just water. It's about getting in a lot of uh, water as well because uh, you're just losing it. Do you do like wrist contact points with ice or cold things like that because you know to I help do. cool your core? I do um, on the run so yeah. typically on the bike I'm just it's more about hydration and I might squirt, squirt a water bottle you know to keep my um, jersey wet because you obviously look yeah. it's cooler if it's wet with the wind um, but it's more on the run that I look at um, holding ice in my hands, trying to hold in my mouth. I find that hard though when you're trying to breathe and hold some ice in your mouth and eat your goo and drink. Um, but yeah, I find holding it in your hands helps cool your, cool your system and also putting ice down your pants. Um, I, you'll see me dumping ice Can down there. Can you say there. that again? Ice down the pants. I mean, that is key. I feel like you put it down my bra top, I put it down my pants in most aid stations. I wouldn't be surprised if there's like a, a big bundle. <laughs> In my, my pants, it's not, it's, it's just ice, people. No, it, melt, it melts so fast when it's, when, it, it, when it's hot. I actually sometimes think that when I'm like pouring ice down and the NBC camera is like right on, I'm like, uh, well, yeah. yeah. Hey, you gotta do what you gotta do in survival mode out yes. there. Um, so yeah, ice down the pants, it helps a lot. Okay, I don't know how I follow up on ice down the pants, yeah. but. <laughs> I'm wondering if you have any race day like rituals or superstitions or anything like that that you've adhered to for your decade of, of Ironmans. You know, I, I mean, don't yeah. I don't have any I mean I my one little ritual that I do have is that I have, you know, my backpack that I bring to every single race has a side pocket full of just like little good luck trinkets that um, people have given me over the years or little silly things like a little leprechaun and like a four leaf clover and like just little good luck um, charms that um, I've collected over the years. And um, I generally take that to the start of every race. This race, you can't have bags at the finish line, but I think I mostly just try and stick to the same plan routine, that I always, yeah. yeah, routine is is the friend of the nervous athlete. Just trying to stick to what you know and, and, and keep that same routine that you always stick to. Yeah, so last question. How has changing diapers affected your training and your life now that you're a new mom with Izzy? <laughs> yeah, changing diapers. Uh, fortunately, Izzy is potty trained. Um, she's done with the diapers, so I haven't changed the diaper in a little while, which is awesome. Um, but yeah, I mean, having Izzy in our, our lives has enhanced everything. Like, um, I don't know. I, we just, she's just such a, a bright light in our lives and, and brings so much happiness. And, and not that there wasn't happy before, but don't get me wrong, we were very happy before, but having that little face um, every, you know, after every session to come home to, and um, it kind of just lightens the mood on everything and makes yeah. you realize what's most important and prioritizing. And then, yeah, just being efficient with your time. When you have diapers to change, when you have a little one that wants, um, wants and wants needs attention. Time, yeah. yeah, and I mean, I, yeah. I, want, I need my easy time too. Yeah. It's, it goes both ways. Um, yeah, you just want to be as efficient as possible with your time away from her. So yeah, yeah it's been great. 
Well, thank you for sharing your time with us. Really appreciate it. And yep. know we're going to be cheering loudly for you. I appreciate on Saturday. it. Awesome. Yeah, yeah look forward to seeing you guys on the Lee. Yeah.